What would you do if your city was overrun by the undead? Imagine, if you will, the once bustling metropolis of Raccoon City, a city teeming with life, its streets pulsating with the rhythm of daily hustle. But in the blink of an eye, this urban symphony descends into a cacophony of horror. The culprit, the insidious T-virus, a contagion so vile it turns the living into grotesque undead creatures. Now picture this. You're sitting in Jay's bar, a regular watering hole nursing your drink, blissfully unaware of the nightmare about to unfold. The initial whispers of an outbreak reach your ears, but it's too late. The bar, once a sanctuary of camaraderie, is now a blood-soaked battleground. The transformation from ordinary citizens to monstrous beings is horrifyingly swift. The city, your city, is now a petrifying playground for the undead. As the virus permeates the city, the streets morph into a maze of terror. The once familiar route home is now a twisted path of survival. The challenge to navigate through the claustrophobic city streets, overrun by hordes of undead and grotesque mutations. The unpredictability of what lurks around the corner makes every step a gamble. In this nightmarish reality, the rules of normalcy crumble. The quest for survival takes precedence over everything. It's no longer about reaching your destination, but about dodging the undead, outsmarting the grotesque creatures and seeking refuge. The cityscape you once knew is now a chilling battlefield. Every alleyway, every building, every street corner is a potential death trap. A split-second decision could mean the difference between life and death. The city of Raccoon is now a terrifying testament to the horrifying power of the T-virus, the once thriving metropolis is now a city of the dead, its citizens unwilling participants in a horrifying city-wide experiment. As the virus spreads, the city becomes a battleground and survival becomes the only goal. This is the chilling dawn of the outbreak. Welcome to Resident Evil Outbreak. The fight for survival for humanity begins here. Imagine finding yourself in the chilling depths of a secret laboratory. This is the grim reality that players face in the second scenario of Resident Evil Outbreak, aptly named Below Freezing Point. The narrative takes a subterranean turn, leading the survivors beneath the chaotic streets of Raccoon City and into the icy bowels of Raccoon City University. Here, the atmosphere is as cold and calculated as the minds behind the nightmarish experiments that have unleashed this contagion upon the city. The university, once a bastion of knowledge and progress, now harbors secrets of a far more sinister nature. The once bustling corridors and lecture halls have given way to a labyrinth of sterile labs and containment units where the only lessons learned are those of survival. The challenges in Below Freezing Point are twofold. On one hand, players face the grotesque results of the T-virus, mutated experiments that lurk in the shadows of the laboratory waiting to strike. These abominations of science are not just a physical threat, they are a chilling reminder of the inhumanity that has led to this outbreak. On the other hand, players must contend with complex puzzles, a testament to the intellect and cunning of those responsible for this catastrophe. These puzzles are not just locks to be opened or codes to be cracked, they are a chilling reflection of the calculated minds behind the chaos. In the cold, sterile environment of the lab, the true horror of the outbreak begins to reveal itself. The horror is not just in the gruesome creatures that stalk the survivors, but in the realization that such monstrosities were born of human ambition and curiosity. As the survivors delve deeper into the labyrinthine laboratory, they inch closer to the truth. The truth about the outbreak, the truth about the T-virus, and the disturbing truth about the lengths humanity will go in the name of progress. In the cold, sterile environment of the lab, the true horror of the outbreak begins to reveal itself. From the depths of the subway system to the heart of a burning building, the terror continues. In the bowels of Raccoon City, the city's subway system transforms into a chilling labyrinth of horror, aptly named The Hive. What was once a bustling network of tunnels and platforms now echoes with the dreadful moans of the undead and the scurrying of grotesque creatures. Here, survivors grapple with the dual threats of infected passengers and monstrous mutations. The eerie flicker of abandoned trains and the echoing sound of distant, unseen terrors create a chilling symphony of dread that gnaws at the soul. The race against time becomes a nerve-wracking exercise in survival, 
as every turn could lead to safety or a gruesome end. But the horror doesn't stop there. It intensifies as the narrative draws players into the fiery chaos of the Apple Inn, a scenario known as Hellfire. Once a refined establishment, the inn is now consumed by an all-consuming inferno. The heat, the smoke, the crackling of the fire all create an environment where danger lurks in every shadow and safety is but a fleeting illusion. Survivors must not only contend with the relentless infected, but also with the flames that threaten to engulf everything in their path. The Apple Inn, which once echoed with laughter and lively conversations, now resonates with the roar of the fire and the screams of the damned. A simple misstep could mean the difference between life and death. Every corridor, every room presents a new challenge, a new threat. The fear is palpable, the tension unbearable. Each scenario, each location presents its own unique set of challenges, pushing the survivors to their limits, testing their courage, their resilience, their will to survive. The stakes are high, the odds seemingly insurmountable, but amid the chaos, amid the horror, the human spirit persists, refusing to yield, refusing to break. In the face of these horrors, escape seems a distant dream. In the crumbling halls of a once safe haven, the survivors face their greatest challenges yet. The scene is set in the heart of Raccoon City Hospital, an institution that once symbolized healing and safety. Now it's nothing more than a ghastly battlefield, a chilling reminder of the city's descent into madness. Decisions Decisions aptly captures the essence of this climactic scenario. The hospital's once sterile corridors are now shrouded in darkness and terror, filled with monstrous experiments that have escaped the confines of their labs. The survivors, armed with nothing more than their wits and whatever weapons they've scavenged, must navigate through this labyrinth of horror, facing off against these twisted abominations. Every corner turned, every door opened, reveals yet another grotesque creature, a product of the T-virus's insidious influence. These are not just mere zombies, they are mutated horrors, each more terrifying than the last, embodiments of the darkest aspects of genetic manipulation, but amidst this chaos and terror, the survivors uncover a shocking truth. The hospital wasn't merely a victim of the outbreak, it was an active participant. The T-virus didn't just mysteriously seep into the city, it was deliberately unleashed, a city-wide experiment conducted under the hospital's watchful eye. The doctors and scientists, once trusted stewards of health, were the puppet masters of this macabre performance. The hospital, their stage, was where they conducted their monstrous experiments, testing the limits of the T-virus, transforming the city's populace into their personal playthings. Yet even as they uncover the horrifying truth, the survivors are left with little time to dwell on it. The hospital is a ticking time bomb, ready to explode in a cacophony of undead and mutated horrors. They must make critical decisions, each one a potential lifeline or a death sentence. Do they fight their way through the monstrous horde or do they search for another way out? Do they split up to cover more ground or do they stick together for safety? As the hospital's corridors echo with the sounds of the undead, the survivors must make critical decisions that will determine their fate. The clock is ticking and every second counts in this nightmarish game of survival. In the face of overwhelming odds, cooperation becomes the key to survival. As we delve deeper into the chaos of Raccoon City, the true essence of Resident Evil Outbreak becomes clear. This isn't just a fight against the undead, it's a story of survival, of unity, of ordinary individuals banding together in the face of extraordinary horror. Each survivor brings something unique to the table. Yoko, with her knack for finding hidden items, can unearth valuable resources in the most unexpected places. Jim, the subway worker, knows the city's layout like the back of his hand, guiding the group through the labyrinth of terror. And then there's David, the plumber, whose mechanical skills can turn mundane items into life-saving tools. These are everyday people, thrust into a nightmare, yet their unique abilities become their lifeline, their beacon of hope in the darkest of times. But there's more to survival than just fending off monsters. Each decision, each action taken by the players carries weight. Do you share your valuable resources or hoard them for yourself? Do you risk your life to save a fellow survivor or leave them to their fate to ensure your own survival? These choices aren't made lightly. They shape the group's journey, influencing their chances of survival and the game's multiple endings. In the end, 
Whether the survivors escape or succumb to the T-virus depends on their choices. Resident Evil Outbreak offers a unique take on survival horror, reminding us that in the face of horror, our humanity is our greatest strength. It's not about the monsters we fight, but the people we fight alongside. It's about cooperation, resilience, and the indomitable spirit of survival. And it's this human element, this sense of unity in the face of adversity that sets Resident Evil Outbreak apart, making it not just a game, but an unforgettable experience. Arrow 2, direct hit on the target, sir. Angel 1, both missiles are confirmed hits. Return to base immediately. This is Angel 1, roger that. Arrow 7 and 10, direct hit. Both Angel 2 and 3 have emptied their payloads. Arrow 5 correction, in hit coordinates. West, 0 0.5, south, 0 0.1. Roger. This is Angel 6 reporting. Confirmed all fighters have emptied their payload. Mission code double X complete. Repeat. Mission code double X complete. This is Heaven's Gate. We got you loud and clear, Angel 6. Mission code double X is complete. All fighters return to base immediately. Roger that. Arrow 8, 11, target in confirmation. Everything that happened was real. The events that unfolded before my eyes will haunt my dreams for many months to come. But I take solace in knowing that surviving this tragedy has somehow made me a stronger person. Time waits for neither man nor woman, so worrying over past regrets is pointless. What's done is done. We can't take it back. However, we may be able to start again from the beginning. That's the one gift we humans have. We can rebuild. <laughs>